Okay, I'm uh, talking this morning. My name is Stephen Johnson, and thanks so much for both your patience and uh, uh, for your forbearance as we muddle through the technical difficulties. Um, I'm talking this morning about the uh, Census Bureau and OSM. Um, we've got a little project going on that we're working on, and I want to cover uh, loosely cover three things. I want to talk, give you a little bit of context about uh, Tiger, what it is, where it came from, and uh, a, sort of set some context about um, the Census Bureau and its products, things like that. Uh, talk a little bit about um, a case study. We are uh, starting to work with uh, OpenStreetMap at the Census Bureau and then finish things up with uh, some questions for research and, and uh, some uh, where, where I'm seeing next steps. So um, let's talk a little bit about the Census Bureau. Um, it is a statistical agency, the largest federal statistical agency, and that has a special meaning. So there's um, a survey and a census are, are technical terms that uh, that mean different things. A census, for example, is a 100% count of uh, uh, a population, whereas a survey is drawn from a sample. And I know that everyone is familiar with the uh, decennial census that starts, uh, you know, it's every 10 years constitutionally mandated. And, uh, but in between uh, those uh, decennial censuses, the census also conducts a lot of surveys, the American Housing Survey. There's also the American Community Survey. Perhaps you've gotten a Perhaps you've gotten a questionnaire that says uh, that you'll be um, asked to uh, participate in one of the surveys, American Housing Survey, National Crime and Victimization Surveys. These surveys are all conducted on behalf of, largely on behalf of other federal agencies, and it's worth about $330 million in reimbursable funds to the Census Bureau. So it's a significant amount of what they do. And geospatial data is central to all of these operations because uh, we have to um, fix people on on, you know, demography requires you to um, affix uh, a person onto the face of the earth and be able to describe them. So if you read the Census Bureau's mission, you'll understand that it, data is, you know, the data provision is the key to, um, it's part of their mission, and uh, there's a strong geospatial component to that. The MAF, the master address file, has latitude longitudes for all of the housing units and all of the group quarters within the country. And that's protected by Title 13. It doesn't see the light of day, uh, and it won't for a while, but um, that's another matter. We'll talk about that later. Um, what most of you in the room are familiar with is TIGER, TIGER line files, which uh, are you know, public domain, and uh, they feature, oh, I don't know, hydrography, transportation, landmarks, things like this. They're all on this one layer, and they're all chopped up into smithereens. Um, into uh, small pieces, and they're used that way so that they can create census blocks. A uh, little bit of history about Tiger Line File. Is Don Cook in the room, by the way? There he is, right here. I would encourage you to uh, seek out Don Cook and talk with him because Don has uh, had umpteen years of experience with this. He's one of the uh, grandfathers of the Tiger system, and he's got a wealth of experience, more than I can uh, throw on a slide or even talk about in the time that we have. But um, it goes back to the 1980s. There was a collaborative effort between USGS and, uh, and the Census Bureau at the time to create, um, there was dime files, the digital files that came from the 80s uh, that the Census Bureau had developed, and there was the digital line graphs that USGS had developed. Um, there was a, 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 a merged product in between there that became the first, uh, the first Tiger line file for the 1990 census. Uh, and Taking that data, um, there's been a lot, there's uh, several companies, Navtech, Teleatlas, and, and Don can talk to you about his experience with taking Tiger data, adding value to it, and, you know, creating uh, a, a market for, for, um, for this data. Um, MapQuest uh, deployed their uh, system based on Tiger data back in um, 96, and it was the first system, really, that would, you would be able to type a street address in and, and find a map for that area. And of course, we're, uh, many of you are familiar with um, the 2008 jumpstart that um, the Tiger Line provided for, um, for the OpenStreetMap project within the United States. So this is an incredible, you know, this, uh, you could safely say that um, Tiger Line launched, had a great deal to do with launching the geospatial industry and um, the GIS, uh, GIS practice that we now have. Um, if you go to the Tiger webpage now, you'll find that you can a whole series of different products out there that you can look at. Um, those include um, a certain amount of web services so that you can pull web services in without having to download a file. Um, I, this is the, the nexus with OpenStreetMap is kind of the interesting thing to me. Um, 
there's, um, of course, I'd like to think that this community, this OpenStreetMap community, is one of the largest and growing constituencies for Tiger data. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end and why I think that's extremely important. Um, the Census Bureau, on the other hand, is looking at OpenStreetMap and saying, well, if there are mappers out there gardening different parts of the country and correcting Tiger 2007, we have a compelling interest in what those changes are, and we want to figure out ways that we can use that data to to improve um, Tiger. So we started a little case study here at the Census Bureau. Um, we have an informal group, and uh, with uh, people have various interests with it that they bring to the table. Some people are coming from demographic directorate, other people are coming from geography directorate. And it's just kind of a casual thing. Um, we're setting up mapping parties that occur every other week all through the summer that go out through September. We have modest goals, um, and we're that modest goal is just to map the Suitland Federal Center for now. And Suitland Federal Center consists is a large campus uh, southeast of Washington where there's a number of uh, federal agencies concentrated there. And there we go. Um, you'll see this is the Suitland Federal Center uh, a few weeks ago on OpenStreetMap. And the Census Bureau is right at the center of that with that uh, bow-shaped looking building there. And um, we've had a few mapping parties, small mapping parties out there, and we've added, you can see, we've added a modest amount of detail to this so far. So this is kind of our first effort there, but we've added some walkways, we've added some parking lots, um, some water features that are out there, as well as some street trees and uh, some of the bike, uh, some of the gates and some of the, uh, some of the bike, uh, bike racks, things like that. So I, I would like to, um, think that um, there's, uh, this, is a fruitful, um, this is a fruitful endeavor between the OpenStreetMap community and the Tiger community. And I think uh, Nate's presentation with National Park Service kind of validates this. There's, there's, some, there's a there there between collaboration between this community and government agencies. And I think the motivations that we bring to this thing are, 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 are important to understand. Um, I think, uh, number one, we're, we're contributing to a public knowledge commons and that uh, interacting with geography on a one-to-one -one scale is incredibly important because you know, as uh, from your own experiences, when you are out mapping, when you are out collecting data in the field, that you interact and you're looking at things a little bit differently than you would be if you were just walking down the street or driving. You're actually paying attention to street furniture, to signage, to addresses and things like that in a way that you would not be otherwise. Now that's important for the Census Bureau because it helps them to understand change detection. It helps them to understand how they might uh, improve data currency and there, there's there's not a local government in this, uh, in this country that can afford to collect all the things that we collect in OpenStreetMap. Trash cans, uh, benches, park, you know, all of these details. Um, OpenStreetMap is, is a great uh, platform for collecting a lot of this stuff because it supports all of that hyper-local detail. And that's important for things like maintenance and things that, um, and, and um, ongoing repairs and things like that that government agencies have to carry out. And I think from bureau people, um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of us who work at the Census Bureau who do not, um, e even though we're geographers in a lot of sense, we don't interact with geography on a one-to-one -one scale. And I think this is important for geographers to have this kind of field experience. And the things that we want to ask is like, how do we deal with ambiguous situations? On my walk to the subway every morning, I see this. This is a, an example in Arlington, Virginia. And um, it's, it's on a corner and, um, so it has, essentially it has two addresses. You know, it could be either 956 Fairfax Drive or 3601 Virginia Avenue. And um, so how do, you, how do you deal with this and how do you reconcile this? And how do you, you know, I'm, I'm sure in your adventures out, out mapping, you've seen this sort of thing yourself. And this is important for us to kind of figure out how we, how we tag these things responsibly and in ways that, meaningful ways that we can do this. So um, I think there's, um, there's, here's where I think the crux of the, the, the real nexus lies is there's, um, we continue to rely on this 2007, um, uh, 2007 import. We're making corrections to it all the time. And um, from, from the, from the uh, Census Bureau's point of view, I'd like to think that, and Nate alluded to this as well, we need your help. I'd like to think that a series of informed citizen geographers can make a difference and help public agencies uh, 
public agencies take on a lot of these thorny mapping problems because we do have local knowledge that can be brought to bear on a lot of these things that are, that are relevant for government agencies. Um, I know that um, we have a, a series of uh, tools that are helpful for looking and comparing OpenStreetMap with, um, with Tiger data. Here's, uh, here's an example that uh, Michael Magursky created, uh, Green Means Go, which is one of my favorites. You can see these, these, uh, the white areas, which you can see are kind of uh, located uh, mostly around urban areas, are areas that have been mapped. The green areas are areas that are not. Here's an example from Washington where you can see the district has been mapped quite well. So that's an area where we can say uh, we should not import Tiger 2012 on top of this. However, if we go west of town, we can see these dark green squares where nothing has been mapped in OpenStreetMap. And we can safely say, I think, or that's the premise of, of this tool, is that we could safely import Tiger 2012 on this and improve the data quality in OpenStreetMap without trampling on the efforts of other uh, mappers local to the community. Uh, Martijn van Exel has done some work along the same, uh, the same lines with uh, finding tiger deserts. Here's an example from Florida uh, where uh, there's large swaths. You can see outside of the urban areas, largely outside of the urban areas where, um, where tiger hasn't been, uh, you know, hasn't been touched. Uh, Edo World's got this nice tool where you can check the uh, tiger uh, reviewed status, ti whether it's uh, tiger reviewed equals no. And of course, Mapbox has come up with this nice comparison tool uh, for uh, comparing uh, Tiger 2012 with what's in OpenStreetMap. So it's kind of a nice comparative tool. Uh, I guess the question I'd like to pose to you, um, given these tools, how can we build on these tools to come up with maybe a set of useful metrics for, that would help us with conflation, that help us with um, uh, help us with a lot of these things that um, that we need to deal with and, uh, and help us to understand um, the referential integrity and, and Nate alluded also to this authority and trust. How do how does if you're out mapping, how does the uh, how does the Census Bureau gauge your uh, ability and uh, the accuracy of what you're trying to add to OpenStreetMap? Um, it presents a lot of challenges um, to uh, for a traditional workflow and and I was happy that Nate brought up a lot of these, these as well. Um, there's the geo priesthood that we have versus this uh, weekend warriors who go out into the field and map. There's um, this formal database design versus tag anarchy and and uh, um, then you know how authoritative versus crowdsource. How do how do we deal with all of these these sorts of things? And of course the licensing issue is is always present there. So um, what do we want to do next? Um, I think uh, that we as an OpenStreetMap community can benefit by better understanding of uh, Tiger, its origins, what it's used for within the Bureau and how it supports Bureau operations and that will help us to determine whether the goodness of fit for Tiger um, for as, as an import into OpenStreetMap. And I think uh, it helps us to uh, understand and scrutinize the data quality. We've got some great tools that you know we've we know where um, we know kind of where Tiger hasn't been improved, and we've got some tools that we can use to evaluate that. I think that uh, also um, that um, I've said it earlier that we are this community is a very large constituency for census data, and that the OpenStreetMap platform can be expanded. I was happy to see Nate's examples of of how that architecture diagram and showed kind of a architectural way that we can uh, foster that kind of uh, foster that kind of engagement with it. And if you take nothing else away from this presentation, here's what I would like to um, say. If you believe in strong public institutions that, um, um, like the Census Bureau, and it, it's imperative that they have a constituency for their data products. Because if they don't have a constituency for their data products, they will go away. And I think that um, the value of uh, a lot of the demographic data that the Bureau produces the, the maps that you saw for um, National Park Service, these are incredible public goods. And, and it, this community can do a lot to uh, bolster and enhance that, um, enhance that um, public function and public good. And uh, it's a social good and it's an economic good. So I think um, it's a, we are a source of uh, citizen collaboration, uh, citizen collaborators with, and citizen geographers that we can contribute to we can contribute and uh, help this Bureau and we can help the National Park Service and all of these other agencies with, with our 
um, with our expertise, our field observations, and things like that. It's also important to recognize that there are a lot of geographers within the, um, within the Census Bureau, and we, we truly do stand on the shoulders of giants here uh, in that we, have, we are you know, continuing on what uh, tradition that they've started, and um, they've thought long and hard about a lot of these problems with addressing, with how to represent things, and we can learn a lot from, the, from that community. So that's all I have, and I'd like to uh, open the floor for questions. Yes? Uh-huh. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I, um, let's follow up afterwards. I, I'd like to explore that. I had somebody else, ironically, like two days ago, ask me, uh, they were trying to reconstruct um, uh, geography from 1992, and um, it's available in the old Tiger Line format where you could have that parentage, uh, the parent-child relationships back, but it's, it's, it's gone in the uh, shape files, and there, mu there might be a way to get that, and so I'm curious to find that out. So let's follow up offline a a afterwards, and um, I'll, I'll certainly take it up when I get back. Great, thank you. Sure. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. They either they either keep the tiger tag untouched or they don't change it to tiger reviewed equals yes or something like yeah or or delete the tag entirely. Um, I, I I don't know exactly what um, you'd have to take it up with Martine and, and Michael um, to see um, what exactly they did and I, I know that they both documented it on their on their wiki pages or, or wherever and on the Green Means Go site. So you, you'd probably have to check there. I would advise you to go to those sources, please. Yes, Michael. Yeah, good. Yes, we're in the front. You thought about simplifying the tags so that newer editors can have access to these magazines. Is that some idea to do with that for now? No, I haven't thought about uh, simplifying the tags. And that's, that's um, I, I haven't really, um, haven't felt it necessary to, to really do that. And I'd, I'd rather kind of that comes out of organically out of the users within the Bureau looking at their classification systems vis-a-vis -vis the open street map and see where the um, to let them come up with that sort of thing and and frankly we're, we're so early on in the project that um, that it hasn't been a real it hasn't been an issue yet so um, we're in six months that ask me that question again in six months and, and I'll have a, a better answer for it yes oh yes uh, Oh, okay. Good. Yes, way in the back. Yes, um, the, um, there's a, a program within the Geography Division called the Boundary and Annexation Survey. And um, that program solicits uh, boundary files from state and local governments. There's a very strong uh, state and local tribal government uh, component within the Geography Division, and they have extensive um, partnerships set up with all 3,149 counties and, and all the 50 states um, to um, receive files. So more and more of those um, files are, are coming to the Census Bureau digitally. And those um, typically, I, you know, I don't know what local mapping standards are uh, typically, but um, the accuracy is much, much improved from what it used to be even 10 years ago when I think the accuracy was like one to 250,000, something like that. So 
Um, it's, it's much more improved. The, 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 um, the updates occur much more frequently. And if you go to the Tiger page, you'll, you'll see that you're able to get downloads of multiple vintages of Tiger. So um, there's 2010, 2011, 2012. You can get it joined with demographic data. You can get it without demographic data. You can do, uh, there's a lot more products available now. So um, the quality um, r is reflective of what comes to the Bureau from state and local governments. Yes. Right, so the question is, um, is there a formal program within the Bureau to update OpenStreetMap? And um, the answer is no. Um, we are just now, this is a very loose working group, and we've probably got maybe uh, two dozen semi-regular participants that come and go, and um, they, are, um, they uh, are just learning to contribute right now at this, and they're trying to get the hang of, of OpenStreetMap. Many of them have never heard of it. And uh, this is an entirely new thing to them, and uh, the whole f concept of contributing, you know, open source is is sort of uh, daunting in, in a way. So, questions? Any more? Very good. Thank you so much.